If you need any more proof that we're living in the future, take one look at the floating trains they're building in Japan for trillions. So hold on to your hat and let's take a look at the Chuo Shinkansen. It's a new maglev train that will be completed as of around 2045, with expectations that it could come even sooner than that. A maglev train, if you didn't already know, uses two sets of powerful electromagnets, one to repel and push the train off the track, thus making it appear to hover, and one that moves the train ahead. This takes advantage of the lack of friction to make them very fast. Japan's latest maglev bullet train is a true leap into the future, but not a cheap one. Obviously, you might guess that a project that literally floats a train above the ground like a speeder in Star Wars wouldn't be cheap at all. The quote that the Japanese government has is 9 trillion. Before you get too blown away, just let me tell you that's 9 trillion yen. In USD, it's not exactly chump change, but not exactly trillions either. In dollars, that would be 66,537,900,000 dollars. So yeah, a big project with a big budget. The specialized maglev technology, the luxury accommodations, construction, and more certainly add up to a pretty extreme final price. I mean, there's a reason that it took so long for this project to get off the ground. <laughs> no pun intended. So when it comes to bullet trains, people are really only concerned with one aspect of it. The bullet part, and where you can go, but before we look at which city will benefit from it, let's talk about speed. That would be just how fast these babies can go. The Chuo Shinkansen is certainly no slouch. It can hit a shocking top speed of 314 miles per hour. Now I know that's fast, but is it fastest train in the world fast? Not quite. The record for fastest train is the French TGV, which hit 357 miles per hour. So yeah, it's not quite the top. That being said, Japan has developed a similar maglev train that led to this one that actually did break that record by hitting 375 miles per hour. So basically, maglev trains are no joke. So seeing how fast this baby is, I gotta know just how fast the route it is that it takes. What, can it go from one side of Japan to the other and back in like half an hour? Well, it's not quite that fast, but not as far off from those speeds as it used to be. It is initially going to have a section that takes it from Shinagawa Station in Tokyo to Nagoya. That route should take it around 40 minutes. Though I'm still not sure just how fast that is. How long does it take to just drive that route? Is it really so impressive? Well, if you're going to take a car through normal traffic, that same journey would take you almost five hours. And that's if traffic is normal. This isn't the only route the train is expected to take. There is a planned extension to Osaka. A Tokyo to Osaka drive takes over six hours. Currently, you can already take a train, which cuts that in half with a time of around three and a half hours. This new maglev train will likely cut that down even more, possibly to under three hours. Now that is definitely worth the money. So how much will it cost you to take a trip on this super sophisticated floating train? Well, evidently the ticket on the standard route could cost upwards of 16,237. That's insane, right? Wait, I've been fooled by this before. Wait for the conversion before freaking out. That's 16,000 yen, which translates to around $120. So what is the equivalent in the United States? For instance, if you take a train from New York City to Augusta, Maine, which is within the same ballpark, that Amtrak ticket will likely cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of $326. It also takes over eight hours. So yeah, this new Japanese maglev train is awesome. We've covered how cool this maglev train is, but what about how dangerous it is? This is a genuine concern seeing as these trains hit over 300 miles per hour and could be a devastating accident waiting to happen. Even the construction of these tunnels aren't necessarily safe. On October 27th of 2021, there was actually an accident that caused two construction workers to lose their lives. A retaining wall collapsed in a work tunnel, burying them both. 
This led to a full evaluation of its safety checks, which found they were severely lacking. So if that's how dangerous the construction is, how dangerous are the actual trains? You might be surprised. The Shinkansen Japanese Bullet Trains Rail Network, for instance, has never had an accident in over 57 years. While there have been a few disasters, such as the Shigaraki train disaster of 1991, which took the lives of 42 people and injured 614 others, or even a crash that occurred outside of Tokyo in 2019 that took one life and injured 34 others. These are considered rarities in Japanese railway history. So chances are that their new maglev beauty may never injure anyone. Well, anyone that isn't building it, apparently. The next question is, how are trains going to improve in the future? Right now, the biggest ideas for the expansion of train technology involves sustainable green tech. While most of those are your standard green energy trains, there are also some that are being proposed to run on human waste. As cool and pretty gross as that is, let's be honest, it's not quite as cool as magnetic hover trains. As far as actual transportation innovation goes, I don't know that we can get bullet trains so much faster than they already are. That means where the future is concerned, the sky is literally the limit. Look at the concepts we've got for literal flying train plane hybrids. These babies are standard rail trains that have huge wings attached. You board them just like your standard train, and then you take off on the rails. After that, the wings come down and the train actually lifts off, all while this baby is still attached to the rails, holding onto it like a giant kite filled with passengers. Then when it finishes its journey, it slowly drops back on the track, lets people off, and takes in a bunch of other passengers. That's quite a few passengers, too. It could carry up to 2,000 people. It would also be a speed demon. The train plane hybrid would move at speeds close to 500 miles per hour, shattering any previously held records. As far as how much this thing would cost, my guess would be an astronomical price. I mean, the technology here would have to be able to safely take off on a rail and then land back on it dozens of times a day. That does not sound cheap to me. The only thing more ridiculous than that are the trains Japan is rumored to be developing that could literally go to the moon. This project may seem like an idea from the future, but it's actually an idea from the past. The 20th century, even. This Japanese maglev technology was being kicked around back in the 1970s. It was a government-funded project from Japan Airlines, Japanese National Railways, and Central Japan Railway Company. In fact, the development of this project project led to the 7 kilometer or 4.3 mile test track for maglev research and development. This was actually the track where the Japanese maglev train was able to break the magnetic levitation track record, hitting 375 miles per hour back in 2015. So it may have taken a long, long, long time, but mission eventually accomplished. Our maglev train obviously has not passed the most important test. That would be the action movie test. Now the real test, in my opinion, is if someone can actually have a fight on top of it or not. In my opinion, it doesn't really count as a bullet train if you can have a comfortable fight where you can keep your footing on it like in Skyfall. A proper bullet train fight should have you forced down to your belly like in movies such as The Wolverine or Mission Impossible. So someone call Tom Cruise because we've got a job for him. So as far as our maglev trains, 314 miles per hour top speed goes, how viable is that for the big fight test? The bullet train from the Wolverine in Tokyo likely could hit speeds pretty close to 300 miles per hour. So you could not comfortably have a fight on top of this maglev train without being forced down to your stomach. Glad science finally answered this question. So hovering trains, flying trains, and green trains all look cool, but I'm still waiting for my teleporter to take me to Japan in like zero seconds. We were promised. 